Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video because it's that time of the month where it's about to be October 1st. So I'm going to be talking about the upcoming events that are expected for October 2024. The reason is, is that we play the NA version of the game, but we're actually two years behind, so we, we have an idea of what JP um, went through. And though there are some changes on the NA side, I'll bring them up if I think it's going to be relevant for this year. So... Also, just to address it real quick here at the start, uh, I'm going to be a little bit quiet for this one, just because people are sleeping. I was I, It's been a very busy week for me, but hopefully soon it won't be the case. So, let's go into it. So, right now, actually, funny enough, if you see here in Japan, um, the first October thing they had was actually, like, Advanced Quest Part 9, um, <laughs> which started it off there. And then they had Lost Belt 5 Olympus campaign. So we're currently actually going for the Olympus campaign. So no need to worry about that. Um, and no, the Olympus campaign should start today. That's right. That's what it is. Sorry. Again, also very tired. <laughs> this is what happens when you record at 2.35 a.m. California time. Anyway, um, I already did a video covering that. You can check that out where I... Uh, said some stuff specifically and there was also some people in the comments that also provided some other look into some of the units that are going to be on those banners such as Canis, someone who actually had her level 100 and talked about some of their specific feelings for him you can check it out in the comments and stuff like that but anyway what is the actual first event thing actually i don't know if we got advanced quest part 9 already so this might come but i actually don't know if we have this or not because i'm very bad at keeping up to date with advanced quests <laughs> so we'll actually check right here and go to en server yep we already got it there we go <laughs> all right let's start for real in october first things first halloween 2022 which on the jv version of the game started after olympus so that's when you can expect it for us i believe for us it ends on um october 7th because it's a week after, which is correct. October 5th to October 12th is an exact week. So if this starts on the 30th, then that means that on the 7th, we will have the Halloween 2022 event. And inside the event, um, if you don't know, you have to have cleared Olympus just to quickly look at it. The free to play unit that's gonna be included in this is the nine tattoo dragon, Eliza, who is going to be our pretender liz and you can enjoy the story i can't wait to look at this story. i always love halloween events it's a shame that i feel like most jap in jet I, I believe in japan their halloween events are more tied to summer because for them summer is the that's when they go to see horror movies so for them halloween is like this thing that they've heard of but it's not their association with scary that's why we haven't never we've i don't think we've ever had a scary halloween event we've had a scary summer event but never one on halloween and also next year we don't even get a halloween event we'll see if japan gets one this year but i love these events uh it's funny that they're all tied to liz except for the one year where it was shooting but i'm down for it i'm down for another free to play liz i will do a video going over the specific units but just to tell you some other ones that are becoming an assassin and a limited star huanzio which if you just want to know quickly right off the bat uh, works really nice if you have Summer Scotty because she also has uh, focused on buffing her Buster and her Quick. And an SR that will be permanent, which is Hong Fei Hu. And I believe this event is going to just be a normal type of. Actually, it looks like it might be a little bit more. I have to look more into this from when we actually do it. But this is going to be the first thing that's going to be popping up. I'll do a video more going over the actual event later, but just to let you know, this is what's going to be showing up. The summoning campaign will look like this. There'll be another summoning campaign tied to it, which will feature a lot of the old Halloween units, such as Jack de Mole, uh, Sei, and Shikabu are not old Halloween units from what I can remember. They're both actually Valentine's Day. Same, Saigon Wong was also not from Halloween. Okay, so it just it's just Jack de Mole. <laughs> then we have Yang Xing. Yang Yu, uh, Xing Lang Yu, and Heisen, the Haitian Lobo. And that'll be the second summoning campaign. There'll be a pre release where they'll do, like, I think something that'll let us get 10 Saint Quartz, which will be nice. Probably a live stream. We'll see. Um, and yeah, very simple event. It's weird to have the start of Halloween event right at the start. I like it better when it's closer to Halloween. But hey, I get it. Like I said, this is just the way the cookie crumbles for us. But that will be the actual main event in Fago for this this go around. 
And the next is a 2 million followers commemoration. I don't know what we'll call it over here, but we'll figure out something because this has 10 sing quartz tied to it. So you know what? Figure it out. Some kind of celebration. Some kind of reason for celebration. Um, but the main interlude for Imaginary Scramble uh, release campaign will be happening. So Imaginary Scramble will be releasing as a main interlude. Which I can't wait because I had to skip the story and I've never been able to set aside, set aside time to actually go through the story again for an imaginary scramble. So I can actually take the time here to go through the event and actually finish the story itself. Um, it should begin close to October. And I guess this is kind of has a Halloween feel for it. It does feature the foreigners which are we're tied to the elder, some of them are, to elder gods. And there are some spooky scenarios in here, so I think it could actually fits uh, October season pretty well. But let's see. I'm, holy shit, this event lasted two weeks? That's insane. Did it really? Let me see. 12 until November 2nd is 1, 2, 3 weeks. So if we get this on the 7, 1, 2, 3, it will be the 28th. And so we will get the main interlude sometime before that because it was 26 here. So if we go... Hmm. So October 12th. To November 2nd there so two weeks in so that means from one two three if the event starts on the 7th and likely is going to last until the 28th we should get this on the 21st if I'm if I'm getting my numbers right yes that is correct it will show up around that time look forward to it um, and you can also have a chance to summon for Van Gogh or Van Gogh, depending on how you want to pronounce it, right here. And she is a phenomenal unit. I'll go into it more, but it's definitely one of the ones I've always wanted to get for myself. Uh, and also it has Nemo, which features Nemo, the unit I've always wanted to be better than he is, because I'm a big fan of Captain Nemo from the stories, but Nemo, I've, I've come to terms with it. I'm better, I'm, I'm, I'm come to terms with his design. It's not like Odysseus, where I was never able to come over and accept Odysseus for what he was, but I have accepted Nemo for the most part. Probably if we got more Odysseus story, I would eventually accept it, but uh, that's neither here nor there. And then we'll also fe feature two summer units, which is going to be Frankenstein Saber and Minamata no Raiko, the Lancer version. And who knows if they're going to, if there was going to be a place to squeeze more stuff in here, I think we could, they could justify squeezing some more in here. Because there are other summer units related to here, like Osika Bihime and uh, Lombo over here, and even um, Sung Yu is featured on here. So I don't know, maybe they could figure out a way to do a banner with them on it. I don't know if anyone would summon on them, but <laughs> it is something they could do. Um, so yeah, if you don't know how to uh, unlock this, it will just be. Um, can be exchanged for free after you cleared uh, Yuga Kishtira. Um, interludes unlocked for unsummoned Van Goghs as well, so make sure to do that. So do if you don't have Van Gogh, now would be the time to do them, because uh, there'll be a new interlude too, and then you can just do the other interlude, but you will have to have cleared the Sin Prologue and also cleared Interlude 1, which this is what it's called, Interlude 1. Uh, and if you've never done the event mechanics, it's kind of like a search the board type situation. I remember this being, like, it, this looks more complicated than it actually is. It's kind of like that old, did you ever see Nick Arcade? No? Am I showing my age? You remember that game, that old game show, Nick Arcade, where there was, like, a dude on the square block? Never mind. It's like a fog of war system. I should have just said that. Anyway, that's a missionary scramble. Look, I'm looking forward to it. There will also be something that will go into actual November, which is going to be really long, but some of these banners are going to start here, so I'm going to probably start until it stops at November to where I think it would go. But this is going to be for Singularity Repair Support Campaign, and these are just going to be a buttload of banners that are going to be related to it. So the main info is all Arc 1 main quests will be 0 AP because they are saying to you, please catch up with the story, please catch up to the story. Interludes will be unlocked for the Unsummon uh, Jalter which will be interlude one and a brand new interlude two. Same thing will go for Dantes, which I believe these are unlocked at different times. Like you can see here, this one was at the 29th. This one was on November 10th. And this one right here for Moriarty was on the 24th. And this one for Sheba was all the way in the 27th. So they will, these will go throughout a lot, basically. Um, 
like this is likely gonna start in October, but then some of these like it's gonna go into November. It's gonna be crazy. A Musashi's trial quest will be unlocked after you clear Sh Shimosa, and then there'll also be a strengthening quest for Miyamoto Musashi, which I believe is this the buff where people were saying why did they buff her? No, this is just a I think a decent buff. I forget, at some point, because there are a lot of single target savers, and they've buffed Musashi, I think, a decent number of times when I don't think she's really needed it. In the fact that she was already a good unit, they just wanted to make her better, but there was a lot of other suffering single target savers that they ignored. <laughs> so, anyway, I think it's cool because Musashi is cool. Look at her. There will be Spirit Stones that you will get. All players will log in and get three, but then you also can get more from the Da Vinci's Workshop, which you can trade in here. Trade in three for three of them, they'll cost you three Mana Prisms, and if you want seven, they'll cost you 70. Lock-in bonuses, which will feature a Saint Quartz, five five EXP, 2,000 friend points, two Saint Quartz, five uh, five star EXP, 2,000 friend points, and three Saint Quartz. A leveling campaign, which will be all the free-to-play units that you got from him, assuming that you're not a new player and you accidentally burned them. Rip to all the people that have told me that they <laughs> unfortunately burned this man, and he ended up being one a, a, a really, really good-ass AoE caster unit. Probably one of the, <laughs> the, the best one for, I think, maybe? Yeah, he has to be the best one for, at least on MP5. Anyway... I don't want to get lost in the sauce of the dialogue for it, but I'm I would, I'm pretty confident in saying he's a really good one. Uh, all these dudes will be able to get a leveling campaign, which is nice if you're going through the story, because that just means free level up for them. And then if you're wondering for the summon campaigns, um, I'm going to go up to five. I think likely I'll stop here and then look at the other ones for the rest of November, but... Summoning Campaign 1 will feature Jean and Jalter, Marie Antoinette, Lancelot, and Gils the Reyes and Gils the Reyes Saber. With Gils the Reyes, worth pointing out, is story locked. So if you're someone like my brother who is looking to maybe get MP5 or more copies, I'm not saying that he is, but if you were someone who wanted more copies of him, this is your best chance because he'll actually be featured. Summoning Campaign 2, which will feature uh, Altera, Song Yilong, Lord El Malloy, Steno, Tamamo Cat, Alexander, and Bodica. Summoning Campaign 3, which will feature Drake. And Bonnie and Mary Reed, Medea Lily, and David, who Medea Lily is once again story locked, so kind of a pain in the butt to get more copies. Mine has always been stuck on MP1, which is a shame because I actually use her a decent amount and I would like her MP to be stronger, but story locked, kind of hard to get. Uh, summoning Campaign 4, which is uh, based off of Lost Belt, it's Lost Belt 4, it's the London Lost Belt. Um, not Lost Belt, I'm stupid, Singularity. This is literally called the Singularity Prepare. It's late. Mordred, Jack the Ripper, Nursery Rhyme, Artoria Pendragon, or Saber Lancer Alter, as I call her, Henry Jekyll and Hyde, and Charles Babbage, with the breakdown being it being Nor Mordred, Nursery, and Jekyll, and then uh, Jack, um, Saber Lancer Alter, and Charles Babbage, which once again pointing out that Lancer Alter is story locked, which really sucks for all of us who really like her. Such a cool design on the first stage and such a amazing design <laughs> on stage three and stage two is also pretty good it just means she's just wearing slightly less like dressy pants it's actually just a removal of the helmet and whatever weird dress thing she's got at the bottom there and then she removes a lot more for here but either way that's not here neither here nor there and then next summoning campaign five which features queen mave kukalan altar Fian McCool and Thomas Edison, Robin Hood, Geronimo with three story locks here, Queen Maeve, Kukalan, and Thomas Edison. With the banner breakdown looking like Queen Maeve, uh, Fian McCool, Robin Hood, and then the other one being uh, Kukalan Alter, Thomas Edison, and Geronimo. And that's what we'll leave it on here. I'll look at these more later, but that's what it's going to be likely looking like for October. Oh, and then Advanced Quest Part 10. This will also be here. Actually, this might go into November, so that's October, as you can probably tell, because this video is not going to be very long. It's a very chill month, and this is the last chill month that you'll have, unless you are a player who already has a lot of the characters in this game, because November, that's when shit pops off. That's when... Uh, my, my general advice here, by the way, is that... Um, Unless you prepared, and this is true for basically any banner, I think I always say this, if you prepared for a unit, 
I think you should go ahead and summon for him and do your best because you're already planned ahead knowing what was coming up next. If you don't know what's coming up next, this is the part where I say, unless you really want to take advantage of Van Gogh's specific um, outside of the domain buff that she has, it's better to really save and start summoning for November because November is insane. It has Morgan. It has the Fairy Knights, which are here with Brittle Mart, which I like Brittle Mart for various reasons. Mainly because she has a big, big armor, which is really cool, and not for any other reason. Um, Barkist and Bubble Sif, another woman with really big armor, and Bubble Sif does not have any armor, but she is on here. Um, Charlemagne, Bradamante, Roland, Summoning Campaign 3, Brynhildr, Sigurd, uh, Kentoki, Krimhild, Siegfried, and Heracles, or Herc, which is all good and which is all nice and good, but the other banner in november features castoria and da vinci which unfortunately for da vinci i love my girl most people are going to be focused on the fact that castoria does in fact return in november there is also something else to keep in mind for november which i'll mention here which is that they have a thanksgiving thing which is harder to predict and i don't know what it's actually going to look like this year but as you can see and then December is even crazier because this one also features Koyanskaya, it features um, Melusain, it features, uh, which you can see here, it features Oberon, <laughs> Melusain, Muramasa. October for most people should just be chill. Try not to summon too much unless you can. I said, like I said, there are exceptions to the rule, such as someone who's been saving a whole bunch of sync wards for specifically the unit they like. I will never stop those people from summoning because they already are summoning knowing what is coming up. But if you did not know what was coming up, and if you're someone who's newer to the game, I cannot stress enough, try your best to not summon that much to October. Even if there's a unit that you really like, like Van Gogh or one of the, the new units in Halloween, I think it's better to get one of the I think it's better to save up for what is coming for the last two months and if you're someone who's also um, already has all those units you already have all the support units Lost Belt um, 7 the units that come with that are definitely worth getting as well both Tez, Cuckoo and even Naito mm, probably, not, probably not in the same discussion as the other two but she is really cool looking so I like to think of her as just as good as the others but definitely there's plenty to be waiting for so I would say Continue to chill in October. That's my main takeaway here. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next month with another one of these videos. Hopefully, you delivered a little bit earlier. I'm always just like barely making it on the last day with these. That's not what I want to do. <laughs> I, I want a little bit more, but whatever. Goodbye, everyone. And now, hopefully, you didn't hear any of my dad snoring in the background. Till next time, peace out.